Welcome back to Not So Grand Garage. Tonight, I'm out in the shop and I've got a treat of a little car behind me to work on tonight. It is a 1968 Mark I Triumph GT6. It is a sweet little runner. And it is out here for some basic maintenance for the uh, upcoming driving season. Good weather's here and it's gonna get out and get back out on the road. So we're gonna service it out. Going to flushed cooling system on it. It's got a little exhaust leak and it's got a little fuel leak back by the fuel tank. So I'll be draining the fuel tank and uh, fixing that. But other than that, she's uh, in pretty good shape. So yeah, we're gonna dive right into it. things first letting it warm up a little bit as uh, these run 2050 oil and I would like the oil to thin out a little bit before I pull the drain plug so I'll let it warm up use the canister style oil filter so it's gonna sometimes be fun to not get to leak Still need to pull the old O-ring out of the block. Kit came with a new O-ring, so we'll fit that. It is a square O-ring, so make sure you don't twist it as it sits down in the groove. Good to go. So the o-ring groove in the block is pretty deep so uh, just a note that if uh, if the o-ring the first o-ring you've got comes out really easy you've probably got another o-ring still stuck in the block um, they harden up and they're kind of hard to get out so be sure you don't have two o-rings stuck in here or you will end up with an oil leak you'll end up blowing the o-ring out so be sure to do that when you put the canister back on Get a light out and make sure this gap around the canister is pretty even so it's centering the canister on the o-ring before you snug this down i believe the torque spec on this is like 16 to 18 foot pounds something like that i'll have to double check but uh probably be a good idea to torque this to spec and you shouldn't have any issues out of it got it all buttoned up cleaned off a little bit so i'm uh, gonna go on and fill it up owner brought out it's pin grade 2050 so that's what we're going to run at it. It's a high zinc oil, which is uh, good for these old motors. But uh, yeah, it should hold around four and three quarter quarts, something like that. I'll dump four, four and a half in it, check it, and go from there. Probably get it off the jack stand so it's sitting down on the ground where it should be. But uh, yeah, we'll get it filled up and uh, fire it up, check it over for leaks, and it uh, should be good. Well, 
Got it cleaned up. Got about uh, five quarts or so in the sump. We'll fire it up. Let it run for just a little bit. Build oil pressure. We'll shut it down and check it for leaks. pressure it's like about uh, 70 pounds maybe 60 shut her down and let's see if we've got a big mess no drips no nothing. So I'll go on and check the oil, top it up. I'll let it sit here and run for a little bit and uh, make sure we don't have any drips for them or anything, but I don't think we'll have any trouble. Well, six quarts of uh, 2050 in our belly, running like a little sewing machine and uh, no leaks, about 60 pounds of oil pressure. So uh, yeah, should be good there. I'll, uh, I'll let it run for a few minutes, just check it for leaks, and uh, I'm gonna call it a night. Uh, tomorrow, I'm going to pull it out, got a flush cooling system on it, and I've got an exhaust leak and a fuel leak to fix, and uh, yeah, we'll have us some back on the road. So today, we've got her back out of the shop. I have uh, pulled the coolant bottle, and uh, carefully, so we don't wanna bust this, but uh, flushed it out. I've already drained the system and now I am pumping fresh water through it to blow out all the uh, sludge and nastiness from the block drain. I'll do the same with the radiator. But as you should be able to see, that isn't very uh, clean coming out of the block yet. So we'll uh, let it run until we get clear water out of it pretty well. Uh, I'll do the same with the radiator. I'll probably fill the system and dump it quite a few times and once we're getting clear water out of all the drains We'll uh, fill it up with distilled water dump it out and then fill the system 50 50 antifreeze and distilled water While I'm at it, I'll also go on, flush out the radiator from the backside, blow the cooling fins out and everything else, and I'll hose off all the antifreeze and everything else. That's uh, now all over everything, but uh, pretty simple process really. So we're waiting for all the air to come up. Now that the uh, bubbles have slowed down a good bit, we'll uh, fire it up and uh, let it come up to operating temperature, make sure all the air is out of the system, let the thermostat open up. We'll let it cool back down, and then uh, that should be good to go. We'll add a little bit to the uh, overflow bottle, put it back in place, and uh, this part will be done. Got everything topped off, filled the overflow bottle, a little over half full. So uh, 
I'll take it for a drive and see how it does. Well, everything's up to temperature. I'm not seeing any oil leaks, any coolant leaks, cooling systems up to pressure. We'll let her cool all the way down, see how low our bottle gets, because it should draw coolant back up into the radiator. But uh yeah, everything looks good. So I'm not gonna bore you with the little fuel leak fix I need to do on the fuel tank or the little exhaust patch I need to do nothing too crazy there so with that said I'm gonna cut this video off if you've got any comments questions complaints drop them in the comment section below uh, if you would hit that like button helps us out and it doesn't cost you anything uh, if you haven't already please subscribe we appreciate you watching